testing testing boleh dengar ke? Hello, Assalamualaikum testing. Yes, we can hear you. Who is that? Ya, Asrul Mahyudin, Timbalan Dekan Alamina. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Okay, we'll start in a few minutes, ya. Oh, okay, Dato is here with us. Okay, Dato, can we start the session? Uh, yeah, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. To everyone, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Yang berbahagia Vice Chancellor University Malaya, Prof. Dato Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Hamdi Abdul Syukur, our Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic and International, Prof. Dr. Kamila Ghazali, all deans and directors, Deputy Deans and Deputy Directors, Head of Departments, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining this very special UM Star Series <laughs> webinar. <laughs> None other than our very own University Malaya Vice Chancellor Yang Berbahagia, Prof. Dato Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Hamdi Abdul Syukur. For your information, UM Star Series is an initiative by ADAC to bring well-known and influential figures to share their insights and experiences with us and also as the bridge to connect the UM campus community with UM top management. We hope that this is a platform for us all to share UM strategic planning and vision and later be able to translate to our own faculty or PTJ's work. Before we start our session, I would like to remind everyone to kindly turn off your microphone during the whole session. But of course, you are welcome to turn on your webcam and indicate your social presence if you would like to. Okay, secondly, Kindly rename your profile as your faculty or academic or center dash your name. For example, my profile is edac dash Farahdina, so that we know who you are and hopefully we can interact with you better. Okay, right. This session is divided into two sessions. First, we will hear from our Dr. VC sharing session about points followed by Q&A session. Okay, please feel free to use the chat tool to say hi to others, to share your thoughts, or even to write your questions. I will read your questions once the Q&A session is open. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Yang Berbahagia Prof. Dato. Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Hamdi Abdul Syukur, our Vice Chancellor, University Malaya. Our Dato Vice Chancellor holds a Bachelor of Engineering Mechanical degree from the Imperial College London, England, a Master of Science degree in Advanced Manufacturing and Management Technology from the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, United Kingdom, and a Doctor of Engineering degree from Kyoto University, Japan. His academic career in UM commenced in 1995. He has wide administrative experiences, first as the Dean of Faculty Engineering 2009 to 2011, then as the former Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic and International from 2011 to 2014. His astounding academic excellence, as well as his remarkable leadership quality, have made him a natural fit to help University Kebangsaan Malaysia, UKM, as its vice chancellor in 2019. And in 2020, he comes back to US, sorry, to UM, to assume the role of leading this beloved university as our 13th vice chancellor. In recognition of his outstanding service and contribution, Dr. Muhammad Hamdi was conferred the Dajjah Johan Mangku Negara JMN by Kebawah Dulia Maha Mulia Sri Paduka Baginda Yang di Pertuan Agong in 2019 and also Darjah Datuk Paduka Negeri Sembilan DPNS which carries the title of Datuk by Dulia Maha Mulia Yang di Pertuan Besar Negeri Sembilan in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I am sure we are all excited to listen from our Dato' Vice Chancellor. So please join me in welcoming our Vice Chancellor, Prof. Dato' Insinyur Dr. Muhammad Hamdi Abdul Shukur. Yang berbahagia Dato', the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Farah, uh, for the uh, very kind introduction. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Um, I, I hope my voice is, is strong enough uh, for everyone to hear. And um, because it's the first time that I use the, um, the PC in front of me now. I believe it's okay, eh, Dr. Farah? Yes, we can clearly hear you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, can you can I see the slide? Yes, you can see the slide, Dato. All right, um, yeah, the title is very apt, the role of academic leader in cultivating voice core values. I'll go very quickly on, on some of the slides so that we, uh, we have more time for discussion. We actually have put this quiz to everybody. Um, did you manage to actually uh, reply to the quiz? Not yet, okay. Okay, I, I have this uh, quiz just to, if you don't mind uh, joining, can, can you, um, uh, you know, scan and as well as answer very quickly. Uh, the question is tell us how, who you are and what do you hope to achieve from today's session? There are 153 people in the, uh, in the session today. Uh, we possibly should be getting around that number. Lah. So is it easy to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try everyone. Let's try the slido.com. Okay. Is it, is it possible to... Yes. Siapa uh, tadi? Is it, is it okay? Yeah. Boleh masuk? Boleh, boleh. I can. And everyone masuk juga? Just uh, type slido.com and enter the code 798495, yeah? Just can. Okay, if uh, that is done, we should be seeing your, your answer very quickly from now on. And we actually get some answers there. Okay, let's see some of the uh, answers so that at least uh, we share that with everybody. Yeah, we have Halo there. Uh, we would expect a lot more than that. If you don't mind wrapping something to respond to the question, at least we, we can uh, capture some of your uh, expectation. Okay, um, you have uh, open dialogue and the objective of the okay. Yes. Okay, the, someone is answering open dialogue and objectives we are heading. Okay, to get clearer concept of poise. Anyone else has got anything to, to share? To get clearer concept of poise, better understanding of poise, okay. Clear concept, uh, learn what is expected of leaders. Oh, okay. From Pasum, better understand poise, why poise, okay. to know more about poise, role of academic leaders in poise. Yeah. So it is uh, related to the title, I believe. Yeah. Any other comments? Either. Clear review of concept. Okay, I think I, I'll probably get some of the main uh, items. Let, let us move on with the slides and see how it looks. Okay. 
Okay, let's uh, move on. Do you actually see the slides? We can just see it now. Oh. Okay. No, we don't see the slide. Yet. Yeah, we can see the slide now. Yeah, uh, we need the PowerPoint, please. Okay. Uh, we've got some uh, freezing there. Okay, we can see the slide that took. Yeah, uh, it does not translate into slide. Not sure. Good day, yeah. Hang in. Okay, there's some freezing there. Oh. Good job, eh? I'm going to share again uh, that slide just now, very quickly. You have to. Do you want us to play the slide for you, Dr? We have the PDF version if you want. Uh, I'll try in one moment and see if this is working. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now let me see the slides. Let me go for the slides. Sorry for taking a bit of time. Here. It's okay. Ta it's not coming. It doesn't come out. Yeah. Okay, what do you guys see? Can you choose reading view, Dato? Come again? Reading view in, on your PowerPoint slide? No, reading view. Uh, no. uh, instead of slideshow. Bottom right. The icon is that next to the slideshow. Ah, uh, there? Yeah. I, I, I think you've tried that already. It doesn't work, isn't it? It's freezing. Reading view. Yeah, the slideshow doesn't work. No, reading view. On the slideshow. No, reading yes. View. Just next to the slideshow. Yeah. Okay. Let me try. Can you click on the tab uh, slideshow and see if it works? How many monitors have you got? Uh, I got two actually. <laughs> uh, I think somewhere in the top, you can actually determine which monitor you want the slideshow to be. Okay. <clears throat> if you go to um, if you go to slideshow, okay. at the there's a there's a tab called monitors. Maybe that's a problem. You go to slideshow. You got that one now. Uh, there's a tab called monitors. It's not coming up here. I think then, you know, you know, you go, you go to the 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 one at the top. You know, home insert design transition. You go to slideshow at the top. Can you do that? They got file, do file home insert design. Do there's a slideshow. If you click the slideshow tab, and then you have the option to change the monitor at the top of the screen. Yeah. So you see there's a monitor monitor on the right. On the right. Monitor. So maybe that one. Can you change that? Is it is it changeable? Try and see. If it's not, then maybe it's just not compatible. Okay. We see now. Yeah, okay. You see now. Yes. Sorry. Okay, let's keep that part. Do I get a race? <laughs> <laughs> you you got, score some points there, definitely. <laughs> okay, uh, during the 100 days, um, you know, uh, we mentioned about the 
our new vision and mission. Then we also highlighted the values, right? Before we actually um, share the strategic plan 2021, 2025. So these are all the narrative during the 100 day of the Vice Chancellor's uh, speech. And um, for information to all the um, deans and deputies and also uh, the department. Right? Yeah, there, right? So there are currently, we are moving uh, quite well then all the strategic plan. Uh, we have more than 100 initiatives been, uh, been rolled out. Some are still in the pipeline. We have been rolling out a few now, and we should be able to get some uh, results very soon. Some are coming up with the results already. Likewise, uh, the transformation plan, there are also more than 150 initiatives now that has been uh, strategized and hopefully will be rolled out very soon as well. So we are going to do this. So we are going to have like more than 250 initiatives in one go. And this is actually quite a, a massive uh, work, technically speaking. So I'll skip that one because uh, it is quite difficult. Let, let me get to the values. Thing. We are pushing the value of uh, poise. And there are issues when, when we talk about values. There are lots of definitions. Uh, I'll give you an example, uh, um, the, the, the pragmatic definition of value you know, is, is difficult if we put this in abstract form. Assuming we, we, go, we go for a trip and then sampai ke r and for example, uh, I have five kids, anak-anak uh, semua, for example, lagi kulu kile, masuk van kita kan? without actually counting properly, along the way, for example, imagine, kita tengok-tengok ada empat orang, only four in the, in, in the van. One is actually uh, still in the RNR. How do we actually feel? Uh, we will be panicking, I believe. Uh, the, the mother should start crying, agaknya, and, uh, with a constant fear that uh, what happened to this uh, small kid. Uh, hanging around in r and r without the parents and, and the family. So that is an example of value, value of a kid uh, to parents. Uh, and this is actually a true, uh, true example happening to a family uh, when they miscount or did not count the actual number when they actually uh, left the r and r So this is how important value is. And the, the value of the kid to the parents is huge that they should not uh, you know, stay happily oh so long tinggal patah balik no they don't do that you know they, they will be really calling people calling the RNR you know asking them to to actually uh, you know look look after their kids and so on and so forth another case for example of uh, the the significant of value assuming a, a burning house eh, then um, when the Mother and the father Katala eh, managed to run away from the house, Klua, and then only they realized that there's one kid still in the house. Anak di masih ada di dalam tu. What do you think would be the reaction of the mother? A lot of time, the mother will rush in back to save the kid, simply because of the mother feels the value of the uh, the kid is more than his own life. So this is, again, an ex another example of value. Jadi, um, and this is happening a lot of time. Uh, a lot of parents actually die because they run back into the house to save the kids because they believe that the, uh, the value of the life of their kids is actually more than their own uh, value, uh, life value. So they are willing to sacrifice. So when, when we talk about value, they will be sacrificed. So hence, uh, this is, uh, you know, the definition of uh, value that we can always get from, uh, from the internet, for example, the, uh, the importance of uh, value. So if we look at this, um, sorry, uh, we, I think we have to unmute. Uh, sorry, we have to mute everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the organizer will mute everyone else except that too. <laughs> sorry about that. No problem. Uh, PhD ada PhD in uh, business management. Uh, 
Uh, and then multiple events happening now. <laughs> okay, I, I just want to show to you this, uh, this picture of two most expensive houses in the world and the most expensive car in the world. Um, how much do you think this, this expensive house and expensive car cost? Agaknya lah. Anybody knows? And number satu tu apa? What is that building? That house lah? What is it? Those who has been in London probably know can can determine what what type of house that is. That is, palace. That is a palace. Yes, that is Buckingham Palace. Buckingham you know, Palace and Bugatti Chiron. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, alam bina ya. Yeah, yeah. Hebat, hebat. I think uh, I have to give credit to that. So this is the value of this uh, building and and also the car. It costs uh, USD 1.2 billion actually. And the car is actually $19 billion. So this is the most expensive car and the most expensive house or palace in the world. Why is it expensive? Does the material cost that expensive? Actually, the, the material to build the car and the uh, Buckingham Palace is not as expensive as it costs. But it is of this uh, price is because of the value that it has, the intrinsic values that this house and the car has. This is not the cost of making it. It is the intrinsic value. So you see Malaya probably has got certain value, but more importantly is the intrinsic value in you see Malaya that makes it expensive, that makes it valuable, and that makes it envied by people. So I think this is very clear to us, the impact of value, not the raw material value, not the cost of manufacturing value, not the cost of construction value, but actually the intrinsic value in uh, the organization that makes it expensive. So I'm trying to bring the, the case uh, in New Zealand layer. It is, it's all about value. And um, the, uh, before the diamond is, is being uh, polished, it has almost no value. A lot of people do not even know that it is diamond. If you have seen the original diamond, it looks like gula batu. It almost has got no value to me and you because we don't even know that it is actually diamond. Only when we polish the diamond, it becomes such a valuable uh, commodity, for example. It may cost one more than a million, but only after it has gone through all these uh, processes. And, and this is uh, about value. At the same time, a, water, a bottle of water only costs a very uh, cheap, you know, value is only one dollar. But the paradox of value, when in the event where we do not have water at all in the, uh, the Sahara Desert, for example, the diamond has got no value to anyone, but the value of water might switch with the diamond. So this is a paradox of value. It depends on situation. It can be of no value to us, but it becomes valuable when the context arises. So this is the power uh, of uh, paradox of value. Again, coming back to, to us, eh? I'll, I'll skip that one. Yeah? This is an example of Google punya core value. Uh, they have six core values. For example, focus on the user. Fast is better than slow. So they, because of this value, Google score a lot you know, in comparison to the rest of the search engine, for example. Um, do the right thing, don't be evil, for example. Very simple core values, but it means a lot and it drives the organization. So this is the impact of uh, core values that us in using layer has got many before, but none has got any impact on us. But the impact of Google core value has risen the company to one of the biggest in the world because it has been internalized properly. People understand the values of Google. Those working with Google understand. Uh, when they do things, they do it really, really well, for example. Very simple value. And yet, this value has bring Google to another level in comparison to the rest. So yeah, uh, coming back to Panama uh, values. So this is, uh, I think, the, the summary. Right? Core values are the basis upon which the member of a company or organization make decision, strategy, and whatnot. It is how we interact with our people, and the core value reflect what is important to the organization. 
So maknanya, what I'm trying to say is that the value is very important. Uh, we coin it twice, kan? And this value has been uh, consistently uh, fed to the uh, organization so that it will be embraced fully. And the one that will have to embrace it first is basically the leadership line. The vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, the department management, and then goes to the dean, the deputy deans, and, and the head department. And therefore, it is very important that we have these sessions man, to actually look into all these core values. Previously, we have a lot of values. Uh, as I mentioned uh, many times, we, I mean, I've asked a lot of people, and none uh, can uh, even remember more than five. There's one guy I remember eight because he prepared before I come. Yeah? But the best that I have seen is that, you know, they can, they can actually remember five out of the many that we had before. So we discussed at the, um, uh, at the workshop level, uh, at the LPU level, in fact, the LPU uh, drive this initially to look at what are, going, what are the core values that we should subscribe for in Simlayer. So the question just now asks, why poise? Um, there, there are lots of values that we can choose, but we recognize that there are some values which are more important to us in Muslim value than the rest. Not that we don't subscribe to it. We subscribe to so many values, but we notice that there are some that require more attention in the university uh, in comparison to the rest. Hence, points. Yeah? And this has been debated in uh, a lot of uh, events and workshops. And eventually, uh, we settle with five and give the acronym uh, POISE. So POISE, passion, oneness, integrity, sincerity, uh, empathy, which I think by now everybody can uh, possibly um, you know, elaborate on it with ease. Eh? So ladies and gentlemen, uh, passion, very clearly, uh, everybody knows about passion and we talk about it every time. Cumanya, we are trying to internalize this passion. What it means with passion to me as a head department, for example. Yeah? So that once we understand that, we have, to, we have to ensure that that passion can be translated down to our lecturers, for example, to our assistant registrar, to uh, our lab technicians, yeah? to our administrators in the faculty and, and department. So, so this is what we want to do, uh, internalizing it first at the management level, at the leadership level, and then ensuring that it goes down. Jadi macam-macam lah kita buat kan. Uh, everybody knows about this passion and so on. I think let's, let's zoom into what exactly that, that, uh, that, that passion uh, encompass. I think when we say passionate people, macam kita ni kan, we are talking about being productive. Yeah? Uh, for the simple reason that if we, are do, if we like what we are doing, if we are passionate in what we are doing, we'll be more productive. That is our belief, no? okay? If we are passionate in, in what we are doing, we believe that we will have great team members because everybody is passionate. Everybody wants to achieve something. They, are, they, they, they believe in it, hence the passion comes in. And we believe that it will create a lot of motivation in doing something. So these are the three elements which we thought that if people are passionate about, they will actually bring forth these uh, three elements. Hence, it is important for us uh, when we say uh, passion. Kita ambil contoh lah, eh. kita tengok dulu, we have this uh, Nipah virus, everybody knows about it, it is a uh, uh, worldwide issue and Malaysia has successfully uh, discovered this. Yeah? Th these are not discovered by a person, uh, it is discovered by a passionate team who actually display you know, courage and, and commitment in uh, solving the, the world issue uh, rather than just a national issue. So this is an example for us as a true passion. Of course, they have been rewarded handsomely for whatever that they have discovered. But what I'm trying to say here is the passion that, that, that has been shown by this team that has resulted in, in a tremendous uh, uh, what call, uh, tremendous impact uh, on, on the uh, not only at the national level, but also at the international level. Kita cakap tentang oneness ni, um, a lot of time it is easy to, to mention oneness. Ni. 
Tapi kita kita lupa sebenarnya a lot of us are working not for University Malaya as a whole sebenarnya. We 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 quite often uh, work for our department. Um, paling jauh pun bangkali we work for our faculty agak ni. When we say we are working for University Malaya, because when we ask someone, it is always about them performing for the department first. Eh? Uh, kalau dia ada research uh, group tu, then it's meant for research group. Uh, very rare that you know people say this is meant for new stimuli. Uh, we hope that we have a reverse way of saying this. You know? This is meant for university first. Um, even though it is very apparent that it is only for department years, I think tak tak terlibat pun, for example. But the way we are showing our oneness, because UM obviously or, or, or quite often is not in the picture when we are trying to achieve something or we must ensure our department is strong, for example. But quite rarely that we say we want to ensure that the similar is strong. Uh, we don't mind our department strong and others are not strong. You know, We don't mind that because we do not see others as part of us. More importantly, my department. Eh? More importantly, my faculty. Uh, UM, uh, UM Dr. You know, uh, secondary. So how to reverse this? Uh, I think this is really a challenge to all of us. Uh, and uh, we have to show it first, basically. Eh? And it's not easy, sebenarnya. Kalau kita tengok kita dengan PPUM, lah, for example, eh? uh, structurally, by right, we are supposed to be one. It's all in the layer. But I remember when uh, when I visited uh, hospital, kita bukan nak kata salah hospital, tidak. Eh? When we visited them, uh, kadang-kadang kita tanya, eh? um, what are you doing? Kata, I'm working with PPUM. Kalau tak cari, boleh tanya lah, eh? any one of them. Then saya tanya, oh, so you are working uh, for UM? Uh, bukan, uh, I'm in U- PPUM, bukan UM. Saya kata, bukan sama ke UM dengan PPUM? Actually, dia kata tak sama. Uh, PPUM lain, UM lain. So this is a very um, popular answer sebenarnya. And uh, how do we combat this? How do we turn this around and say that we are one? So sebab tu oneness ni ada isu. Uh, di UCM Malaysia menjadikan, uh, we thought that this should be a core value that we have to um, put forward. Lah. Hence, uh, oneness is one of them. Lah. Um, kita tahu kan, animals have shown oneness in, in many fronts. Right? An example is a, a pack of wolf and they don't go and, and uh, attack individually. You know, they always come uh, in a team. Yeah? showing oneness, for example, because they are stronger if they are together. And obviously, if they are alone, they can't really achieve much. So this is a lot has been seen by us, but somehow uh, when it comes to organization as big as UM, 5,000 people in UM and in PPUM alone, there are 6,000. Eh? Uh, and uh, it is very difficult for us to feel that we are actually in one organization because we are always in our department and of course in our faculty. It is it's something which is not easy for us. Everybody knows that. PPU, PPV kita telah menunjukkan uh, a successful oneness. Man. Because in the PPV, a lot of people are actually working together. Bagian sumber manusianya, dengan AASC-nya, as I mentioned earlier. Man. Uh, dengan kita punya keselamatannya, kita punya faculty working very hard, medicine particularly kita punya volunteersnya, jawatan pendaftarnya and and uh, so many other people are working in uh, ensuring that the PPV is a successful PPV. So we are one of the first uh, until now we have uh, we have uh, vaccinated uh, you know close to 200 more than 200,000 people uh, plus those one and those two. Jadi this is an example of uh, a oneness that has led to a very strong and big impact to the nation. Eh? Integriti ni kita tak cakap lah tuan-tuan dan perempuan eh. Sebagai uh, ketua di faculty dan di jabatan, eh, it is paramount lah. Eh. Integriti ni, we show the example, people look at us uh, and um, it is something that we we will never be able to compromise. Eh. And uh, we have issues with the integrity sebenarnya recently. Quite a number of cases that has been uh, brought to the uh, disciplinary committee and quite a few has been uh, has been you know found guilty um, and such crime is 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 a terrible crime we are 
sad to see such an integrity breach happen in our university, some to the amount of uh, half a million. And uh, we are worried that those are the integrity issues that we managed to find. Uh, is there any other integrity breach that we fail to find maybe? Yeah. So th th these are the things that people are thinking now, whether we are really, you know, an integrity organization at the point we will do things when people are not looking at us. So this is the integrity issues. Uh, and integrity in the workplace is very important. If one is not having integrity, dalam, dalam, banyak, dalam banyak level sebenarnya, kalau katalah kita kata jabatan, say for example, um, katalah VC lah, for example, um, taking a decision or making a decision which has an integrity punya compromise element, it will have a huge impact on organization in the long run. Because katalah kita award a tender, katalah dalam jatuh rasa tender, jatuh rasa perolehan, for example. We award a tender to to a dubious uh, company, say for example, that has something to do with us. And that is a breach of integrity. What we have seen today in, in a lot of uh, delay in construction work, one of the reasons is because of that. Okay? Um, we have been shown to take certain uh, construction firm, for example, that was actually, that has been blacklisted. Can I make you up? It is awarded to, to all this. And what happened, more often than not, actually, this uh, group of companies has failed to deliver according to the time. Kita nampak banyak ada kes. Dekat UC Malaya pun ada kes-kes yang sempurna itu. Daripada dulu sampai sekarang kalau kita tak hati-hati. So this is an example of uh, of integrity issues. Ada banyak lagi yang kita boleh fikirkan. And um, lack of integrity ni sangat uh, berbahaya sebenarnya. We, we have been pushing our integrity unit to combat this uh, as strong as possible. Either it is uh, related to money, for example, or it is related to uh, abuse of power, uh, even uh, making wrong decision yeah? that is purposely done uh, knowingly, for example. So these are lack of integrity issues that, that has been happening in our university and uh, some has been thrown out of our organization, unfortunately. And uh, we are not going to compromise on integrity. Sincerity ni tuan-tuan dan perempuan semua orang tahu. This is very obvious. We do our work sincerely which is very easy to mention and probably the most difficult to implement. Sincerity ni um, there is no measuring stick. Eh? Uh, just like any other values. Eh? It's very very difficult to measure. We are trying to measure but it's very difficult. Uh, we are putting that into um, into a measurement you know, techniques now where we are trying to evaluate as much as possible through rubrics, lah, through uh, you know, 360, macam-macam. But -macam. truly, kan, it's, it's impossible to, to measure correctly. We probably can measure to a certain extent the uh, symptoms of values, kan, good values, kan, if I may say a symptom. But we cannot uh, possibly measure it accurately. Kan. So as much as possible, we try because we are pushing the, the values, hence we need to know what is the status of values implementation in our university and what is the attainment uh, through whatever ways that we can. And therefore, we are trying to incorporate that into our yearly assessment, uh, as you all know. It's, it's a very critical quality, very difficult sebenarnya. Kita sincere buat kerja as the dean, as the health department. Um, because everybody has got their own personal interest. Eh? Kalau kita kata tak ada interest ni, maka kali bohong. Sebab everybody is built into them the uh, personal wants, the wants and the wish. Uh, and therefore, to say that you know I do not have all that is probably uh, incorrect, sebenarnya. But what I'm trying to say is, as much as possible, we act in sincerity. Understanding that we have our own personal interests, each one of us, yang tak naik pangkat, nak naik pangkat, for example, kan? So kita kata, oh, no, I'm very sincere. I, I do not need naik pangkat. Boleh? <laughs> yeah? 
ada kawan cakap macam tu tak naik pangkat pun tak apalah ada ke eh? uh, mungkin dia kata eh, dia kan actually say that eh, but in in reality deep in the heart they might not uh, agree to what they say eh? uh, because of the personal interest and personal wants jadi apakah orang itu tidak sincere if they have that wants and the needs uh, we are not saying that they, they are not sincere because everybody is built in into them all these wants and needs kan eh? Tapi sincerity is how they overcome that and make decision, do work, you know, without being controlled and influenced by all these needs and wants. So very, very difficult sebenarnya to be honest, to be open. These are reflection of sincerity. Kan? Cakap senang susah nak buat. Kan? Jadi um, kalau imagine if every one of us are sincere in doing our work, kan? I think UM is a wonderful place to be in. If everyone is sincere in delivering what they are supposed to do, eh? rather than uh, lepaskan batu di tangga, eh? passion pun tak ada, eh? sincerity pun tak ada, eh? and it's very easy to do that. You know, I've been the head department, I've been the dean, for example. Uh, knowing that head department ni dia every three years, every two years it will change. Eh? We never know that we're going to be continued as head department. We might not want to be. Head department. A lot of us are being forced to be head department, betul? And given the choice, maybe we do not want to be the head department. Uh, if we want to be the department, jadi pelik pula kan? Oh, nak sangat ketua kan? Jadi, it become uh, an issue pula kan? So, in the first case, jadi kan orang yang tak nak, people who do not want to be the, 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 the leader, for example, do not want to be the head department, but was asked to be the head department, ataupun was forced to actually hold the position. So, what would be the reaction then? Agak-agak ada passion tak? Eh? Agak-agak ada sincerity ke dalam buat kerja ni kan? Because everybody is chasing for promotion. Everybody is chasing for high KPI. Everybody is trying to ensure that they publish as much as possible. Okay? Uh, being academician. So, holding the post ni, you might not be able to do more because you have to focus half of your time or probably more than half of your time to ensure that the department or the faculty is moving well. Kan? Jadi, a lot of people do, do not want the post. So, yang kita yang ambil ni macam mana? Kan? So, we terpaksa lah ambil dah. Tak ada orang nak ambil, kita ambil lah kan. We have to, we have no choice, technically speaking. Kan? Jadi, uh, <laughs> macam mana sincerity kat situ? Eh? Agak-agak ada passion ke? Ha, buat je lah kan. I'll do whatever I can do. No, and then after the three years, someone else will take over. Kan? Imagine eh, if this is a leadership that we have in the department and the faculty. Do we think that the department can actually fly? Do we think the department will focus on expanding the department, for example? Moving the department from one stage that they are now to another stage that they are supposed to be. Agak-agak lah with this uh, sort of uh, mindset. You know? uh, will there be any sincerity in, in devoting oneself to, uh, to do work for the department or for the, for the faculty for that sake? Kan? Jadi, these are sincerity issues lah, tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Eh? Um, even though we do not want to have the post, but if we were asked to take specific posts, kan? it is actually good that you do not want the post, you know. Sometimes it's very uh, doubtful, kan, bila somebody wants the leadership post, kan, sangat-sangat nak, kan, kalau kita pun curious juga, kan, why is this guy want to be the head department? Why is this guy uh, really wanting to be the dean, kan? Orang oh, lain tak nak, dia lomba-lomba nak, kan, pelik, kan? Jadi, uh, kita jadi pelik pula, kan? Tapi what I'm trying to say is, we do not want the post. If we are being given the post, we will do it to the best of our ability. I think this is what uh, most of us should be subscribing sepatutnya. I'm, I'm quite worried if everybody wants to be leader juga kan. Quite worried lah kenapa kan. You know? uh, for what reason kan. Jadi, <laughs> normally kita macam tu kan. Sebab a lot of us kita tak nak jadi ketua kan. A lot of us. I think, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, sincere people, they do not want to be if possible. You know? But given the, given the post, they will do it to the best of their ability. They sacrifice to the poor. You know? So I think this is uh, we are, what we are hoping for. 
I know that will be another comment from you, Nanti kata, well, we should be rewarding these people. Okay, we are talking about reward in a different term. Now we are talking about the person holding the post. The person, we want them to be sincere as much as possible, being in the poise in the situation. And we want the person to actually uh, have the passion. So again, a, a, bit, a bit long uh, on this page, but, but I just want to stress uh, the importance of sincerity. I just want to give some example. Uh, some of our professors, uh, the besaru, uh, they have already hired, but they still want to serve as uh, honorary professor. Honorary professor ni without emolument. I think you all know about this. But they are passionate in what they do. They are very sincere in wanting to see their students continue the PhD without stopping. Kalau dia tak duduk kat situ, it's difficult for the students, the PhD students. So this is, I think, an example of sincerity that we really value. We don't have enough money to take everybody on contract, for example. But we really honor and value our retired uh, professors who are willing to come, uh, even without uh, emolument. Uh, do you know that some of our staff contribute their salary you know, to, to our endowment consistently? Eh? Uh, so we are very uh, you know, pleased and, 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 and we are very happy to see some of the staff um, actually do that, even though they might not be in, in a professor position. Kadang-kadang staff-staff biasa. Eh? We see that they do uh, cut their, their salary and, and you know, have a constant contribution to endowment. So these are an example of, uh, of sincerity shown by our academic staff and non-academic staff alike. Eh? Okay, the last one uh, uh, is empathy. Uh, empathy ini is a very powerful word sebenarnya. Everybody knows this. Macam mana kita nak tegapkan uh, empathy ni dalam staff kita? Eh? People coming from overseas. You know, some of us, you know, we, I mean, quite a number of you here, you study overseas, right? We expect empathy from the university. Eh? We expect empathy from our supervisors, uh, from the officers, from the administrators that we dealt with when we were studying for our undergraduate, master, PhD, kan? Um, kita boleh rasa bagaimana this empathy is very powerful when somebody show to us, kan? When we are, you know, in our first year, for example, kan? budak-budak lagi, kan? For example, I was in London, tak tahu apa, kan? But when people show empathy, I remember sampai sekarang, kan? After 30 years, you know, we can still remember the example of empathy, empathy shown showed by you know individuals that have crossed uh, path in our life and uh, so it's very powerful empathy people remember us people remember our institution only because we show empathy towards them jitantan perempuan is very important you know? a lot of uh, empathy has been shown by by our people you know? um i hope i have some slides that that, that can demonstrate that uh, Uncle Aziz, for example, is a person who has shown huge empathy um, to, to the poor people, the rural, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the rural poor people. And, and uh, he has been striving, thinking on how we can, uh, the country can elevate the, the poor and let them be uh, you know, on their toe. So this is an example of empathy that has been translated into a very powerful action by a, a vice chancellor of our university and hopefully this can motivate all of us to demonstrate this empathy kalau kita tak ada empathy kita katalah kita dalam uh, empathy dengan industry for example eh? our industry uh, particularly the SMEs and small and medium enterprises for example they might not have R&D but a lot of them so many even the MNC, multinational companies who open businesses in Malaysia, they might not have huge R&D. They panggil R&D, tapi a lot of their R&D is basically problem solving saja, not a real R&D. You know? Most of the R&Ds are being done in their mother companies, in their own country or elsewhere, but not in our country. Uh, SMEs require a lot of empathy from us. 
researchers in in university but do we actually show empathy to them so empathy ni bukan tunjuk kat orang dengan student je sebenarnya empathy is is at every level the government is struggling for example to settle the issue of um, this pandemic our economy is, is shaking and um, a lot of our people are suffering how how does you see malaya show empathy uh, to the country uh, do we actually do something uh, to help people who are suffering out there for example people lost their jobs people do not have enough money they are now using the white flag to show that they require help yeah. do we actually have empathy as an organization so that that question has to strike us man not only at individual level but also at departmental level also at the faculty level the government announced that the, the country is moving towards um, industry forward for example the policy of ir 4.0 How do we, the experts in this area, I have a 1-0 element, do we actually help the industry? Do we actually help the ministry? So again, this is empathy. Uh, do we actually in the department discuss about that? Again, are we strategizing it at the faculty level? Do we actually the faculty level? Do we actually show this? So empathy is not just us and students. Man. It's a very narrow way of uh, you know, defining empathy. I think it should be beyond that. And it should encompass the, the, a bigger context. So yeah, uh, at individual level, yes. Maybe empathy to students, empathy to our partners. Most of the time, empathy to students. Our PhD student, our undergraduate student. If we are not teaching well, kita rasa bersalah ke tak for example, kan? tak ada empathy ke masuk kelas, cincai-cincai mengajar, for example kan? maknanya we are not having empathy because we can just teach uh, you know, just to fill, fill out the, uh, the the KPI for example so again this is a very powerful word, empathy um, it is a heavy word so uh, very easy to mention but it, it you know it encompasses the the whole body of uh, the organization to to implement this uh, empathy successfully so yeah jadi in short kan uh, if i may uh, conclude ni maknanya kita punya values ni kita nak translate jadi culture sebenarnya kan otherwise it become a uh, value yang kita hafal poise 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 kan tapi it devoids of meaning so how do we enculturalize huh? the uh, values into our society, sorry, into our organization. Uh, first into ourselves and then, of course, to, to our organization yang kita pimpin. I think this is a really a uh, very difficult uh, move that we have to do. So, internalizing the, the core value so that it become culture. I think this is the um, the core issue that we are talking about here. And we are hoping that, you know, the department will talk about poise in the meeting, for example, again. Um, the department will start to talk about uh, implementation of uh, these core values in our uh, in, in our lecturers, in, in our administrators at the department. Macam mana nak buat ni? Think about how these values can be can be embedded in our work culture, for example. It's not easy, it has to be a process. And, kalau tidak, people might not understand how to do it. For example, you know, the meaning of uh, katalah oneness to me might be a bit different than uh, than to to Dr. Farah maybe. Uh, because your your definition might be different, you know. Uh, my definition of uh, of sincerity in comparison to to our uh, apa nama pengawal keselamatan, for example, may be different. The context is different. And the understanding also might be different. So we need to give meaning to this within their own context. It's okay. There's no one size fits all. Yes. So, yeah. So we, we how do we actually do this? I think this is where our social scientists should come in and help the university in internalizing these values. And of course, they have been helping us uh, in coming up with the, um, with the poise assessment and so on and so forth. 
So we are uh, we are very happy with that. Yeah. Hopefully, this uh, culture can last longer than us actually, yeah. and hopefully uh, it will be uh, trickle down not only to the to the management, not only to the leadership at the faculty and departmental level, but also to the rest of uh, of our staff in the faculty and also department. Do you have anything? Okay, tak boleh jalan. So it's uh, we have issue again. Okay, okay lah. Um, why should I care? <laughs> A lot of people and I'm here just for three years, two years at the department, at deputy dean, dean. So why should I care? Um, some people might be asking this question, you know, uh, this is what the management wants to do, so what, you know, um, I, I'm not part of them. Uh, whatever you want to do, uh, I'll stay the same in the department, you know. Ada bukan beza pun, duit ada kan, facility teruk kan. So, cakap lah apa pun, then, you know, nothing change at the lower level. Right? So, if this is the way we are looking at things, then um, we are very far from culturing these uh, values, I think, very, very far. So why should I care? We must care because we are at the leadership level, the deans, deputy deans, and and the head departments. Um, the culture is to recruit, is to recruiting as product is to marketing. Aje tulah lebih kuat kalau kita boleh bagi gambaran. Betapa pentingnya itu market tak apa, kan? Tapi when it comes to culture, it's, it's the most important thing: recruiting, bringing in people. And beza dengan marketing, kita casting the net and ramai orang dengar tapi the culture is the most important thing jadi um, orang datang kat kita ni kadang-kadang bukan kerana apa sangat, they are, they are actually attracted to us uh, because of our service or because of our product kan, customer attracted to us but employees are attracted to us because we have uh, proper culture kan? And we must ensure that people stay with us. You know, we want our workforce to stay with us. Like missing they, they like the culture. You know, they enjoy the, the values that we uphold. Sekarang ni orang fikir lah, nak letak jawatan je lah kan. Nak lari pergi tempat lain. Gaji sama, salary is the same. It should be you know, staying elsewhere than Kuala Lumpur. It's cheaper, cost of living is much cheaper. Dan naik pangkat pun senang. So, a lot of pressure in the university. Might as well, I go somewhere where I can uh, get promoted easily and less work, yeah, because KPI is much less, for example. So, um, yeah, that might be true as well. Uh, we are an organization that look into performance, but if we have a great culture and great values, people enjoy staying, even though they know that, you know, in comparison, to other universities, you know, they can possibly get professorship you know, anytime, for example. But in Singlayer is a university that they love to be in, you know, not because it is so much uh, more difficult to get promotion, but because of the great culture and the great value subscribed by this university. So it's very difficult, you know, because you know the um, one is tangible, another one is intangible. But yeah, that is the uh, challenge for the entire. Uh, leadership sebenarnya to create this so-called culture ni. Jadi um, balik tu kepada kita semua lah tuan-tuan dan perempuan what is the role lah eh, as academic leaders ni and um, I know that uh, you, you have been going through this many times maybe but uh, I need to reiterate that you know the role as academic leaders are very very important sebenarnya to ensure that benda ni sampai ke bawah. Uh, I'm not able to reach out to the 5,000 people down there or even 6,000 in the PPUN. It's impossible for the management to reach there. But we can reach you, you know, the 100, 200 people uh, in here that will eventually translate this to the rest of the campus community. Therefore, uh, you are very important uh, as academic leaders that transmit this information and translate it into action at your level. So um, I know this is very sketchy. Um, I'm having a rough day today. Uh, two board meetings, uh, you know, back to back, and uh, uh, but I can see that the university is moving. Uh, I can see that the um, 
we are actually looking at you know certain trajectory for the university. I'm confident that we are in the right direction. Um, what we need now is to get everybody on board, getting the you know middle leadership and and, and slightly lower leadership to be with us, to uh, you know be on board in this journey. And it's impossible for just the management to carry the entire uh, journey alone. So we need to have everybody coming on board with us. So that's why um, it's very apt that the uh, EDEC is handling uh, this discussion. So I, I know a lot of uh, these you know, things that we can discuss together. Uh, hopefully, uh, by having this session, uh, Dr. Farah, we can find out how we can um, implement this. So I stop there and, and uh, like to listen to your comments and suggestions as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Homdi, for sharing with us about the points, um, the values that we are going to implement in our organization. I think that uh, a lot of us um, have already hafal points, <laughs> but to translate it and, and to make it some kind of, uh, you know, in our blood, is not as easy as uh, half full it, right? So well, I would like to first uh, invite if everyone else would like to share your thoughts or have any questions uh, that you would like to ask to our Dato Vice Chancellor, you can use the chat or you can just um, unmute your microphone uh, and then talk directly to Dato. Yeah, I can see uh, Dr. Siu from Arts and English Department. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, Dato, um, thanks for clarifying your thoughts on the, these core values. I have just two things I would like to, uh, to, to say in relation to, to this. First is that um, I don't know whether you... you and in the process of coming up with the five core values, uh, your team thought about the the, the top down versus bottom up uh, kind of flow. Um, no, it's going to be a lot easier if the direction is top down to to uh, inculcate values if they are values that are already there, and we just need to you know heighten the awareness and. and put in place structures that will encourage um, people to, to enhance these values. So passion, for example, is something that um, I think most academics should have for their discipline, um, similarly integrity. So if we were to focus on these two values, I think that would be very easy. I mean, you know, if somebody don't, doesn't have a passion for his subject, for his discipline, then, you know, I mean, there's nothing much you can do. Uh, really. Uh, but also, I think there are people who might have started off with a lot of passion for their discipline, and all this has been sort of whittled away because the structures um, that are in place have not supported this passion. So, you know, talking about the bureaucracy and things like that, and uh, promotions being stymied, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, integrity, again, is something that I think is integral to our, our, you know, our, our role as academics. So I think we have to focus on uh, core values that are, um, people can readily identify with, that are in, in essential part of who we are as academics. It would be a lot easier. Um, empathy, maybe it's not something you immediately think about and you associate with academia, because you, know, you think of academics as, as scientists with a, you know, uh, approaching everything uh, with a very objective mindset. Uh, but I come from the humanities, uh, and I think even in the sciences, there's a growing recognition of the need for, for empathy in the way we um, approach our subjects, in the way we relate to our subjects. And, um, you know, um, in, in a way, for example, engineers, when, 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 when you guys design something, uh, you, you need to be able to empathize with your, your customers and all that. Um, so... Um, of course, I, I'm, I, I seem to be suggesting that the other two values, openness and uh, sincerity, 
are a bit more difficult for people to relate to. But anyway, so, so that's been my first point. Um, I think if you've focused on something that's integral to what we are and our core business as academics, uh, you find it a lot easier, I think, to, to push this. My second point is that, um, you know, if you, you try and push these values from, from top down, unless you have structures that are in place that can support them, it's going to be an uphill struggle. For example, you know, you want people to have um, empathy, okay? And I think that's very important. But if the system, if the structure underneath does not support um, empathy on the part of users, uh, in fact, the system itself is not empathetic. And the system, you know, comes across as a very cold bureaucratic machinery and you're asked to do things that are not logical. So in this respect, I think it's a very good move by the management to, uh, to move things like, you know, filling in forms and, and doing the course documentation and all that, moving that to a dedicated team of um, administrators, which I understand it is, is in the pipeline. So I think that, that will um, help very much. So these are the two points I want to make. Can I? Uh... Yeah, go ahead. Would you like to respond to that? Uh, heavy question, I would say, <laughs> but very good one. Uh, quite fundamentally, uh, uh, you know, being being uh, recall, uh, being asked. Uh, Cuma gini, um, the the values ni. When I came in in uh, in November last year, it was actually been workshop already. You know, uh, at that time, the LPU is championing uh, this transformation plan and they have a specific uh, vision uh, lab, action lab or something like that, you know, workshops, you know, to come up with new vision, new mission and new values. When I came in, uh, basically, things have already, you know, uh, get into motion like halfway or something like this. And... Obviously, I do not want to go back to the drawing board and, uh, you know, I want to kickstart and leverage, basically riding on the tide and the wave. And hence, uh, you know, quickly assembled the team. Okay, I said, all right, for the LPU, the board of directors, it is the management should take over this rather than spearheaded by the board. So I take the bold move that this is supposed to be a management thing rather than, you know, the board uh, spearheading. So. Basically, we take over the entire operations and process, and the board become advisory. Uh, you know, so that's how it works uh, from the from November till till the middle of this year. Did it, when it comes to the values, it has been kind of identified by these action labs and workshops, and uh, not wanting to go back to the drawing board. So I just you know consolidate the effort and then conceptualize it. And say okay, uh, if you have done all the necessary uh, references and whatnot, so we are going to conceptualize it because I can't go back to the drawing board and start all over again um, because they have done that uh, quite rigorously. So that's that's how it works, Manan, Initially, so we come in, I and my team come in, and then we identify what the, what are the core values that need to be pushed through, and then acronym it. And then we say, okay, let's bring it to, to the campus, you know, after the LPU agree. And then we just, uh, you know, drive from there. So now what we are doing is uh, putting it in, in the KPI, for example, a uh, portion of your KPI, 15% comes from these points where people will evaluate uh, in terms of 360. I know that lots of things that we can improve, uh, but we have to start and then improve along the way rather than make it uh, perfect and then, you know, having to wait for another one year before we roll it out. Likewise, for the non-academic, for example, 60% actually come from POIS. This is a kind of um, institution, institutionalize it in that manner because without a proper system, this POIS cannot be measured and cannot be implemented. The next thing that we are going to do very soon is that everyone in the engineering layer, including the vice chancellor, will have to craft our own personal meaning of core values. For example, like a vice chancellor, what does it mean by oneness to a vice chancellor? 
what does it mean uh, to to have oneness for uh, Dr. Faradina, for example, in EdTech? It might be different. Likewise, what does it mean oneness to a first a driver, for example, a bus driver in Simlayer? So everyone will have to write their own uh, core value statements, and we need to get the deans and the deputy deans and the head department to help people understand these core values. How can they write something that they do not understand? So we have already come up with a booklet. Eh? Uh, the booklet is uh, apa namanya? Uh, the Poise, Poise booklet. Eh? I'm not sure whether you have seen this or not. But yeah, the, this is probably you have not seen this, right? Uh, this booklet is is straight from the oven, basically. It's just uh, a week old. And we are going to present this as well to the board of directors. But this has been approved uh, last week uh, by the um, by the Pengurusan. So this will be the reference. And we are also sharing this with other universities in Malaysia, how we manage uh, to evaluate uh, core values in the university. So these are some of the things that we do uh, in response to what the um, doctor mentioned just now in order to internalize. So we are not going to go back to the, to the uh, drawing board anymore. We're going to stick to the core values that we have decided. Um, there are lots of uh, school of thought, of course, you know, views and whatnot. But once we have decided on the core value, it will stay and it will have to be implemented. You know? So that's how we, we look at things. Um, if we want to change anything, we change before we make decisions. So once the decision has been made, meaning that we need to move forward. Uh, and do not compromise on on uh, what has been decided. So that's that's uh, how it will work. Now. On the system which is bureaucratic and not empathy enough, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we recognize that we understand the issues. What we are doing now, as much as possible, through transformation plan and the strategy plan to change. Uh, an example, what we have been doing, kita, we're going to spend, well, we actually approved already last two months, the conversion of, uh, you know, conver hang on, uh, conversion of certain processes in the human resource so that it will be, apa kenapa, it will be automate yeah, as much as possible. It will be in the system rather than having to do manually. You know. So we are trying to systemize everything, make things in the, you know, online and stuff like that. Not PDF things, but, you know, make it easier. The process is, is, is cut short and so on and so forth. So we are spending money uh, on two big areas. Number one is HR, human resource, anything human resource. And number two is our Mendari in the, in the, um, in the versus office. So we spend probably what? close to 2 million for developing the program uh, so that by end of the year, hopefully we can have a more efficient system rather than having the uh, uh, bureaucratic issues as mentioned by our doctor just now. So yeah, we are doing that. Um, give us a bit of time to handle these uh, uh, issues and complaints. So the transformation plan and uh, group task forces have been very well uh, running. They have identified these nitty gritty things, which we are now zooming into. A lot of things we, we are not aware of. We might not, you know, we might not be aware of uh, at, at certain level. But with by having uh, the transformation group, the, the task forces, they are actually picking up all the small small issues which which re need to be uh, fixed. And the university is uh, hopefully you know looking into this and, and fixing it. Uh. Yeah, so, as I mentioned, it gives us a bit of time to, to see fruition of all these uh, initiatives. Sorry, a bit long. It's okay. Thank you, Dato. Um, I think uh, this point is not really new, as one of our participants said, Dr. Uh, of Professor Madia, Dr. Adelina Asmawi said, these values are not really new, actually, probably already within us. Now it's just to nuance them accordingly. So um, with that, I think, can I invite Dr. Adelina if you want to um, explain more about your thoughts? Dr. Adelina? 
Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Assalamualaikum. Uh, was just a comment I made uh, based on what the the yang berbahagia BC has mentioned just now about this like being like a starting point, almost like something uh, foreign to us. So I thought uh, I would to comment and say that it's actually so probably within us already it's just that we need to nuance them accordingly so that's just a comment in passing that's all thank you thank you dr adelina so um prof Dato, i think that um now we are starting to open our campus uh gradually right so we are now welcoming students uh in the next semester we are hoping to there are things that we still need to remember and it's very, very related to the points, which is, I think, empathy. Uh, perhaps one of the values that we need to think about is that some of our students who will be coming to our campus this semester might have lost their parents okay, or their loved ones. And hence, uh, their life is a little bit different now that they are not the same person that we have met like a year ago when we met them face to face. So uh, some of them could have been you know, forced to take the role as parents to their siblings. And, and now that they are coming back to campus, um, will there be any changes in terms of um, you know, strategies that we should um, implement with them? How do we be empathetic enough to our students who already uh, you know, experience this um, lot of changes in your life. What do you think that though? Well, uh, quite true. There are some who lost their yeah, loved ones, uh, even our staff as well. Um, we have the mechanism already in place to assist the needy students who are struggling, you know, to, to even to get food for the family who has to replace the function of uh, the dads and the moms. We understand that and we are cognizant of the fact that uh, we have uh, such students in our campus. So we have activated this uh, HGP punya, punya, tu, tabung, bantuan, and so on and so forth. Huh? We have a lot still. You know, we want this to be used, bukan simpan. And we managed recently to get uh, 2 million from Mr. DIY after the, the initial uh, IPO. Kan? initial public offering. So the owner wants to give our students, uh, so they give us 2 million. So each student will be getting 300, those needy ones. Lah. So there are quite a number of students actually obtain this. We get from Zakat, from uh, personnel, from people. So those uh, mechanism is, is there to assist the student. Might not be sufficient, lah, but the mechanism is there. So we are going to use whatever we have, lah, basically, dalam tabung. Uh, to distribute to the needy. Uh, nanti kita kumpul kemudian. And, jadi that's the, the philosophy now. Rather than nak bagi sikit-sikit, nak bagi macam tu kan. So what we are doing now is bagi. Whatever we have, just give, you know. So that they can survive uh, and and they can really, you know, study. Jadi uh, hopefully lah, that helps a bit lah. Uh, might not be too much. Yang penting yang as, as what you mentioned of the uh, Farah, to bring people back to campus. So our campus might not be able to house the entire numbers, you know. So what will happen after this, uh, coming October, we are make, going to make decision very, very soon. Probably, I think, within this week, uh, we will decide. If we, uh, and we are trying to be in, you know, in line with what the government is doing, MKM is doing. Jadi, um, we can't wait for them because you know, their decisions are a bit late. Because we need to inform our people earlier. So as part of the empathy, kalau kita kata by 1st of October, everybody will come back. A lot of people need to arrange for their kids, for example. Siapa nak tinggal rumah, you know, students might not be able to go to school. Kan? Jadi, we have you know, staff that has difficulty to send kids. So we are now looking into all these uh, issues. Lah. Not easy for us, yes, but we need to bring people back to campus as much as possible because uh, productivity need to be maintained. It is very, very tough to maintain productivity when people are elsewhere, uh, be them the lecturers or the you know, non-lecturers. Um, especially the support staff, you know, very tough. Uh, they, are, you know, they are drivers. So work from home, macam mana? <laughs> they are, you know, pembersih and, you know, menjaga kebersihan. 
work from home. How does that work? You know, they are doing the facility management, maintaining our leaking, our electricity and whatnot. How do they work from home? You know, they need to come and, and, and do this job of theirs because we are having issues with, with, uh, with our facilities, for example. So, yeah, we are going to make that tough decision to bring back people into campus. Students pun macam tu juga, we cannot bring the entire lot. Soon we are going to have people, uh, you know, in doing RL, kan, remote learning. So in the class nanti, there will be physical interaction face to face. There are also people remote learning, which will never come to, to our show uh, at all. We have also uh, hybrid as well. So these are all the things uh, and it is going to tax us a lot because we have to ensure every classroom is uh, equipped with the facilities to do this uh, online teaching and whatnot. So yes, uh, what you mentioned is very true. It's a, it's a huge challenge for the university, but we have uh, one month to, to actually do that. In fact, we have been preparing before all of it. Jadi hopefully, lah, um, hopefully this, uh, this arrangement of ours uh, will be smooth, inshallah. Inshallah, we hope that everything will be um, smooth sailing. So, um, if anyone else would like to share anything with Dato, oh, we have Dr. Prof. Christopher Boy. Would you yes. like to Good that? afternoon. I, uh, I, I've actually written in the chat book, but since uh, I've got a chance now, I'll, I want to just express my thanks to Dato VC eh, for giving us such clear goals. Uh, because with clear goals, this is uh, something that uh, all staff can aim for. Uh, I've got one proposal, uh, and this is from personal experience. And from all the previous events that I had when I was a lecturer to interact with the rest of the faculty, it leaves very good memories and a good understanding of the other members in the university. So I propose that if the university can increase further the number of events and opportunities, where staff of every different faculty of all levels, not just the top, but every level can come together to interact. That will enable us to understand one another better, therefore increasing mutual understanding and also increasing oneness and empathy. Uh, and I think uh, Dr. just now when mentioned about uh, maybe PPUM uh, may have a feeling that the rest of the university is different. I think this can be overcome. If there's more opportunity, uh, for different people to meet together and therefore understand each other. That's just my, my small proposal and thank you very much. Thank you excellent. for sharing. Yeah, excellent, Dato, uh, Christopher. Uh, we, we are actually dying to, uh, you know, to have this program, meeting people and uh, yeah. I think you are probably looking at something like Nadi, uh, Sungkai or something, is it, Dato? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was something in the pub. Yeah, something similar. Yeah, where all of us can get together. Uh, maybe now it's not e easy to get together physically, but maybe online like this. So I think that gives an opportunity for interaction. Mm -hmm. So when there's interaction and then there's dialogue, there can be mutual understanding, and it, it makes it possible for the oneness that you were talking about just now, the oneness and the and the empathy. Because only when we understand each other, uh, these things can come more clearly. Uh, I, as I said, I've got great uh, memories, even from the uh, Cursus Induxi, you know, I know uh, from the Cursus Induxi, uh, when I had uh, 30 years ago, uh, I still have got good friends uh, until today from the Cursus Induxi, from all the different faculties, and it is a good memory. So yeah. I, I speak from that kind of experience. Likewise, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I support that and uh, yeah, good, good idea. Let us think on how we can uh, yeah, enhance those interactions through online and virtually. Thank you, Rato. Uh, Thank point, you very much. Thank you. Point, yeah. We have uh, Professor Zul Q who would like to talk to you. Professor Zul? You are muted. Right. Okay, sorry. Thank you, uh, Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, Dato, um, you, you, I mean, I, I, we appreciate uh, the change that you're trying to make and um, I'm in full support. Uh, but um, you mentioned the word um, enculturation, trying to create a culture. And I believe that um, it takes time. And in our 
in our setting at the moment, um, in our administrative setting where where you know the 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 terms for VC or a dean, you know, is very, very limited to about two, three years and so on. Do you think that I mean I feel I seem to think that that is not in line or you're not supporting the changes that you want to you want to make? What are your thoughts on that one? Um, well, this is something which is not within our control, uh, Prof. Uh, but but Dato, uh, we we are people. People keep saying that we are autonomous, right? Now, is there any way that we can actually determine our future? You know, right right from the very top. I mean, the, the place of the VC, for example. You know, not just for two years or three years, and then you change, and then everything changes again. You know, things like that. Maybe you know we should be going to a set. Your thoughts, Dato? Well, first and foremost, I do not see myself extending beyond three years. <laughs> uh, uh, that's number one. Uh, but again, it, it is very much uh, uh, some. This is under Nikan. Uh, that the power to appoint is is vested upon to the minister, okay, as stipulated in the Act. Um, so it's very very tough uh, to to say a lot more than that. Even though they have the um, currently have the Jatan Kuasa Perdana, tapi sana punya. Jatang kuasa pencarian sana ada uh, chat by Tan Sri Zarina but eventually it's up to the minister whoever the minister is lah kan at the moment we have our minister so she will determine jadi um, actually university can't say much though actually to, to tell you the truth eh, university can't say much about this we are at the mercy of the uh, minister uh, and therefore you know since we we are unsure about the future the best we can do is do our best now and hope for the best future in the future. You know? <laughs> and, and we believe that, uh, you know, the, the, the person who will be replacing the VC will be a better person. Right? We, we have that positivity in us. So I have three years uh, only. I've only finishing 10 months and, you know, very quickly it goes. So another, if you more, another two, two years and, and two months. So I, I'm in a hurry, you know, uh, a person in a hurry. Uh, ensuring that whatever that initiative we are doing now should be rolled out as much as possible in the fastest possible way without, you know, uh, shaking too much. Lah. I mean, of course, there will be shaking here and there, but not too much. Lah. So what we are going to do now is a uh, proposal queue right? to, to systemize as much as possible. Everything should be in the system, not initiative that hangs in, you know, here and there. It has to be embedded in the system. Hence, the KPI is a system. And SAPT is going to be a system, which we are looking at now. Hence, uh, the poise is, is embedded in the system. When people are writing their soon, eh, when they are writing their, their poise statement, they have to write it in the system. Uh, we are developing the index clusterian program. Eh? It's also systeming, systemizing the, uh, the way we evaluate programs. At the moment, we are not doing. So as much as possible, we migrate into system so that it is a lot more difficult to unroot, put it that way. So if you notice that what we are doing now is to yeah, embed into system so that it goes into the root uh, of the system rather than initiative, yeah, you know, when the VC goes and everything goes. Itulah. So a lot of uh, system being developed now uh, for that reason. Uh, Prof. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, Prof. Zul. Um, there's a follow-up question related to um, empathy, Dato. We see uh, from Dr. Lim, FEA. Uh, Dr. Lim, are you available to talk to the VC directly? From Dr. Lim from FEA. Dr. Tian Ping Lim. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. You clearly. Uh, Dr. VC, I, I just want, I, I like the values that, that you, you uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, has been implemented and, and I really feel strongly for that. But I want to talk about implementation. Is it in us? And one, one example that I see is that uh, empathy towards the foreign staff. Okay? Because uh, I hear cases where the contract <laughs> is not, we, I, I mean, we didn't give them decisions, you know, it's towards the end. I have a case uh, a few years back where they only get to know one month or I think one week or two weeks before, you know, they have family, they didn't apply for job. And then at the end, we give them, okay, this is your one-year contract. You want it, you take it. You don't want, 
just just so I I feel that we we don't have that kind of empathy, you know. And 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 at this moment, I think we have a case also. Uh, eight weeks, we haven't give him a decision. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Doctor Doctor Lim, um, I agree wholeheartedly with you on this witness. Um, I chair the um, the committee and uh, seen this coming up quite a number of times, and uh, we have not been doing justice for our international staff. We have been treating them with disrespect by not informing them much earlier, at least you know three to six months earlier, whether we are going to continue them or not. We we have been doing very bad. Uh, I agree with you, and uh, I'm quite sad to hear that we are still doing that now. Um, not only that, when we appoint any one of them, dah ada lambat, you know. Because our rules say that if we want to reappoint a professor contract, we have to go through the LPU for approval. You know? So because of that, the, the VC has got the power to actually give one year extension without having to go through the LPU. And eventually, everybody got one year, one year, one year. This is the issue. Mm-hmm. And recently, uh, we are trying to put a stop to this. We still have some issues uh, in the process. Hopefully, by, you know, end of the year, we should not be listening to this, um, you know, issues again. Now what we are doing is, if the person is good, that like international staff is good, the professor is good, we give them up to five years, you know now? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, I heard that, yes, very yeah. good. So no more one year, it's, it's ridiculous to give a person one year. It's, it's just like saying that, okay, then wrap up, and wrap up, you are going to leave us after one year. If the person is good, give him the security that he required. So yes. we are giving a person three plus two, because we can't give five years straight, because of whatever is GPA in your rules. Right? So we give them three plus two. Right? Then if they are good after three years, they do not need to bring back to us. We just actually you know, pass them through. So... We are changing the system now as much as possible. I apologize that we still have a few more in the pipeline that we are delaying. Um, we should not have done that. So I agree with you. Um, we will have to improve the way we, we, we deal with our international staff. Okay, thank you, VC. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum, so Datuk. Boleh cakap? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Asrumah Yudin. Uh, Lambina. No. Uh, just like to uh, give a bit of suggestion, Datuk. I think uh, what has uh, Dr. Farah mentioned regarding the empathy towards uh, our students is, is, is very important. Uh, one thing that I, I noticed that uh, this uh, pandemic has, has caused is that uh, there, are, there are students who need uh, the other side of empathy other than the connective, the emotional empathy. And I think uh, after done uh, some audit with uh, QMAC and just happened to know that the counselling uh, section uh, of the university, I think they, they they run quite thin. Banyak yang yang apa yang ada emotional issues, things like that. Whether it's students, especially students. So my suggestion is just suggestions that maybe uh, these counsellors uh, do do train some staff, some staff who met the uh, the criteria to to uh, give counselling to students. So it's lessen the uh, the burden, and you sometimes the counselor to uh, they are twenty four seven need to be ranked up. You know, some student maybe uh, in terms of maybe end up uh, suicidal. Or, I don't know. Maybe staff pun mungkin dia ada 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 masalah. Yeah, uh, mungkin dia hilang uh, uh, their loved one things like that. This is a suggestion that maybe on the other side of the empathy. Obviously, empathy are the connective empathy, emotional empathy, and I'm not sure the other one that the work. Yeah, maybe the emotional but the helping the, the students, especially the students, yeah, who are who have never been in this situation uh, before. This is so unprecedented. Yeah. Itu rasa Yeah, Doctor, you are very, very true in what you mentioned. Uh, we actually do not have enough counselors, you know, even for our staff. Kita ada dua saja dekat BSM. Nah, dia. Yeah, I think I think operational wise, I was informed. Yeah, the uh, mouth to mention lah. About five, yeah, two full time. I think three are uh, standby. And uh, it was one time uh, Alam Bina did or try to offer maybe one one space room to be an occasional uh, apa counselling uh, centre lah. You know, uh, one corner dekat Blok Oko tu kan. 
it had to be this kid I mean uh, bilik untuk counseling ni dia special sikit bila masuk tu tenang sikit kan dia tak dia tak dia dia lain sikit kan so i do not know maybe uh, the the price of this uh, pandemic uh, regarding the emotional scar and psychological scar is Uh, I do not I don't think we can quantify lah, but I takutnya the impact uh, and bila the impact the impact on the last part of your voice which is the e hmm. uh, the empathy tu. Uh, very very much thank you uh, for the uh, suggestion. Memang it is high in priority in the pendaftar punya list of things to do which is to add on to the number of uh, apa nama counselors and everything. And we are also thinking, first and foremost, we are trying to merge the the, the two units now, so two ka BSM, two ka HGP, so that they can actually um, combine force. I know even with merge, we are not having enough. But the piece when they combine, they can hopefully optimize to an extent. I mean, if orang are free, orang are cover juga kan. But at the moment, they are two separate unit in two separate entity, you kan? Know, okay? going to do now is actually combine um, dan kemudiannya add on more people that, you know the warrant issue is is uh, is also a, a challenge to us but yeah i take note of your uh, point the asrul and will strengthen the, the the idea to you know and forward it to 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 kita punya pendaftar insyaallah hmm. yeah, thank you um, yeah that's uh, Related to that, uh, perhaps this is a good time for us to uh, share our resources together. For example, perhaps uh, we have experts or professional counselors in our PTJ. Um, if I can mention in education, we have a lot of experts and students trained to be expert. I'm sure in FOM, Faculty of Medi also, uh, there are some resources. Perhaps um, as we walk through this, um, you know, to healing process, uh, we can come together as a one PTJ, which is one UM, and help each other in, in navigating this um, difficulties. I yeah, forgot to tell that actually, yeah, that's one of our uh, short-term solution as well. So thank you, Dr. Farah, for highlighting that. Yeah, we have that in mind as well, actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Oh. Risi, can I say something? This is Danny, Danny Wong. Yes, so I uh, this this is to follow up with what uh, uh, Dr. Faradina has said. Uh, actually, we realized how uh, severe the situation is, and uh, the faculty actually, uh, you know, we have our own uh, people dealing with these uh, kind of issues, uh, psychologists. Uh, so we set up a, a, a hotline. We have eleven lecturers uh, volunteer themselves and. Uh, So we put that up on our website, uh, faculty website. And so far we have been having a lot of uh, responses. People call up and so on. And uh, we realized that this is no longer a faculty matter because people from other faculty students, actually this is meant for students and uh, students from other faculties are also calling. So I, I think, uh, you know, so this, but of course they are not going to, uh, this is the first, uh, what we call first line response. So when, whenever there is a need to refer them to hospital, uh, to PPUM, to counselor, professional counselors, they will do that, uh, uh, you know, accordingly. So, so this is a, a, a kind of uh, processes which I think the PTJs can actually do something if they have the right people. Because uh, although we may be, you know, uh, we may be uh, scientists and, and so on, but many people actually have a certain training, uh, certification training and so on in in terms of uh, what we call uh, counseling and so on. So maybe this is a uh, one first uh, first line of response that we can actually set up at the PTJ. Uh, at least we, we, we realize that it actually works. Thank you, Dato. What do you call that, uh, Dato Denny? What do you call we call it, it first line response. We call it, well, basically we call it uh, unit kesejahtera uh, on uh, mental. Uh, we just call it in that way. But it's actually a volunteer uh, Uh, you know, uh, we asked lecturers to volunteer. Uh, so far, we have 11 uh, who came on board and their phone numbers are listed actually uh, for, for students to call. So sometimes they do provide uh, services right up to midnight and so on, uh, talking to students, uh, advising them as to what's the next uh, best course of action and so on. Mm. 
That's very good move. Uh, I think I'll take more of that and uh, you can possibly share with the rest uh, on how you do it in Sastra. Thank you, Reto. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Um, that, so in relation to having a systemic change in University of Malaya, and you, you are in a hurry, as you said, you need to do this uh, and within limited time. Uh, perhaps we can also take a look at our system. And I can, if I can invite Prof. Shakila from INPOMA um, to share her thoughts about the systemic approach. Oh, thank you, Dr. Farah. Um, Assalamualaikum semua, Datuk Wisi. Uh, izinkan saya bagi pandangan sebab sekarang ni kita uh, bercakap tentang, tentang behavioral economics. Yeah, we need to change people's behavior at University Malaya. Uh, we need uh, for them to adopt and adapt and accommodate points, values. So I suggest kita identify what are the behaviors that we need change, you know. Um, you know, at, at, you know, for academics, what are, what are the behaviors that we want them to change? For support staff, what are the behaviors that we we want them to, you know, support and change, be proactive, for example. They always say, oh, tak dapat arahan, saya tak buat. You know, they are never, they are not proactive, you know, mesti tunggu arahan, baru, baru laksanakan tugas dan sebagainya. So, so we need nudges. This is a nudge theory dalam BI lah, Behavioral Insights. You know, so these nudges are positive reinforcements. Because kita nak pakai carrot and stick, uh, kadang maybe too aggressive or harsh, kan? Uh, tapi bila kita kenakan punishment, penalty, um, this is the, the only way forward sometimes, yeah, for our people, <laughs> you know, to use penalties and to punish, you know, but we don't want to do that. We want to um, adopt the reward approach, you know, for positive reinforcement. So I just thought that maybe, you know, for every faculty uh, leaders, yeah, uh, deans, maybe they should identify first and then come up with, you know, positive reinforcements lah, uh, using the nudge theory. It's called nudges. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Prof, uh, very, very timely since you mentioned about carrot and stick and so on. We respect our academic staff uh, very much. We know they are good, a lot of good people uh, in UM. We hope that they will continue, um, you know, their good job and we wish to support them as much as possible. However, we also um, recognize that there are also people who might require a lot of help um, and people who probably require a bit of uh, shaking yeah? and we recognize all this. So what, what we're going to do now is to focus on the carrot first as much as possible. Uh, we do not want to focus on too many things in one go. When the time is ready, we will have to turn our head towards those who are not with us. Um, and because we can't let people, you know, uh, you know, not in the bandwagon, they need to jump with us. We cannot leave them behind. And uh, if they decide not to jump, then we are going to have problems. So what we are going to do in this, at least one, one and a half years is to focus on those who really want to jump and those who are able to jump. Those who are taking a vaccine and do not want to do much, we will need to address this, uh, but much at a much later stage. So I hope you know, the, the faculty and the department will address this so that centrally, uh, you know, we do not have to uh, face it too much, you know, because sometimes it's, 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 it can get ugly, you know. So I, I'm hoping that the faculty take that, that initiative first because it might be a bit odd and awkward if we start doing that from the central level, um, we want to maintain the harmony as much as possible, showing you know respect or, or to each other and, and maintaining this relationship. But when things get get you know into action, then then uh, you know, I think centrally we, we might not have that much of a choice. So that's why I hope you understand my my message. Uh, we need to start mobilizing our people, the faculty and the department. And um, showing them and it, assisting them, assisting them as much as possible, so that they they can move. Because a lot of people sometimes they want, you know, it's just requiring a bit of uh, motivation and whatnot. So I believe the the, the number is, is is small, 
um, and manageable. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think we are uh, going towards the end of the program. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of uh, conversations, a lot of thinking is going on with this uh, new thing, which is not really new, it's within us, but to translate it into our own routine work will be a little bit of a challenge, I think. So with that, uh, we have to end uh, our session for now, but I hope to continue in other sessions. Thank you so much. our. I am very that to be seen for allocating some time to be with us today. Uh, before I forget, can we take a picture with everyone? If you do not mind, okay, this is a wajib thing. <laughs> if you have a webinar like this, if you don't mind to turn on your camera, can we take a picture with that to be seen? Okay, Edek, um, Anis, are you ready? Okay, we have seven pages okay i'm so sorry i did not welcome tak baru nampak prof camila i saw prof azwan and also prof aziz i'm so sorry tak perasan tadi prof thank you so much for joining us too okay you don't you don't have to as a it's part of oneness <laughs> we are all in this as one we're the audience <laughs> thank you thank you okay let's take a picture together uh, dr farah uh, jana will take the picture Okay, Jenna, are you ready? Okay, yeah. ready everyone. Don't forget to smile. Ready? One, two, three. Smile. Okay, next page. Smile. One, two, three. Smile. Another page. Third page. Okay, ready everyone? One, two, three. Smile. Last page. Ready? One, two, three. Smile. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jana. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Thank you. Top management members who are with us today to to menunjukkan the oneness of UM. Okay, <laughs> it's something that we learned today. And thank you, all the deans, um, uh, deputy deans, uh, head of departments, everyone who joined us today. Hope to see you again in our other session. Uh, and take care, everyone, and 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 enjoy your day to day and the rest of the day yeah okay thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.